coming up on Solar Quotes TV. The fire hazard that could soon be a thing of the past. It's Karate versus Crystalline in the ultimate panel punishment test. Our bearded blogger's theory on why home batteries are still frustratingly expensive. Rage reviews when solar installations go bad. Plus, meet Paul, a statistician who has done his solar sums. All that and slightly more on Solar Quotes TV. Hello and welcome to Solar Quotes TV, episode three. Let's get straight to the solar news, you solar nerds. Really exciting news. It looks like something that the industry has been crying out for for years is finally going to happen. I'm talking about the proposed changes to Australia's solar installation standard, AS5033. No, that is not a Star Wars droid, that is the Australian and New Zealand standard for the installation and safety requirements for photovoltaic arrays. And what's been a real bugbear about this standard it has mandated the use of DC rooftop isolators. They're a switch and they go on the roof and when you turn them, they disconnect the wires to the PV array. Why was it introduced? Well, a representative of the fireys on the standards committee insisted on it. It was a good intention. They didn't want to be electrocuted by the PV array when they're on your roof fighting fires. Unfortunately, this baby sitting on your roof exposed to the sun is probably the single biggest cause of solar fires in Australia. But we have had a number of instances where these fires have um, spread to the house. For a few years, you've had to put one of these heat shields, known in the industry as the barbecue plate, on top of the isolator. It shields the plastic from the harmful rays of the strong Aussie sun, but it's a band-aid solution. Nowhere else in the world mandates rooftop isolators. Even New Zealand that we share the standard with cross that bit out because they thought it was stupid. This really is a great example of unintended consequences. It's the solar version of a cane toad. And we all know how that went. I digress. So what are we proposing to replace the rooftop isolators with? We're going to hopefully replace them with a point of disconnection instead. And that's simply a well-labeled connector that an electrician will disconnect when it's safe to do so. If this draft standard gets adopted, it's a win, win, win. The fireys are no less safe. They can still isolate the array from ground level. Your solar system is even safer. And thirdly, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper. If you're looking for a quality solar install, jump onto our website, put in your postcode, hit the big red button, and get up to three free, no obligation quotes from heavily vetted installers you can trust. Now for this month's field test where it's Karate versus Crystalline in the ultimate panel punishment test. Hi all, we're here in Adelaide with Wineco's Blair Pester and the purpose for today's field test is to discover just how easy is it to damage a solar panel. Now in theory, they should last till almost the rest of my life. After all, the top panel brands have a product warranty of 25 years plus. But Blair, it's not as simple as that, is it? It's not. A lot of things can go wrong in the installation of solar panels and then the transportation of solar panels, even just while it's on the roof. Anyone who's accessing your roof can stand on it or massive hailstorms. So today I brought some tools to show you how we can identify what damage is done to a module. And that can be quite hard, can't it? Because a lot of the damage is often invisible to the naked eye. Absolutely. And these panels here look mostly perfect. What equipment are we going to use to look for panel damage? What we do have is a FLIR camera, which is a thermal camera. Yep. Much like how the Predator used to hunt, hunt down Arnie. And we've got some modules over here that we've short circuited. And the purpose of short circuiting is so that we can shunt all of the power in the module back through the cells that are damaged. So three old panels, mm -hmm. unknown condition. True condition will be revealed by the Predator camera. It sure will. Let's go and see what's happening on the camera. Perfect. So what we're seeing right now is each of the cells starting to heat up. Just to be clear, blue is cold, red is hot. Okay, so on the far right panel, what's going on with the The far right hand panels, it, I'd say it's had a hard life. Okay, should we go and have a closer look at that panel? With the sure, yeah, let's do that. So this, this panel's looking a bit shady. Now I'd say just looking at this, it's got a lot of impact marks. So this is what we'd classify as a stood on mark. 
Yep, right there. And it's getting quite warm. Sorry, this cell here, which looks pretty much perfect to the naked eye, is also being shown on the thermal imaging camera to be absolutely buggered. All right, so we've seen that some of these panels aren't in very good shape. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now let's see what happens after we give them some abuse. You filthy panels! You suck! You'll never pay back your energy debt! Complete waste of time! You're only installed by greenies who are virtue signalling! Should've gone coal! Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for, Blair and I are going to stand on a solar panel and see who does the most damage. You'll seem to be holding up all right. Yeah. They are designed to hold uh, just up to two metres of snow. Good to know in Adelaide. The next test is the Abusi Karate Kiki one. <laughs> Do you know how strong I am? All right, you ready? Embracing. You're right, big fella. I'll survive. <laughs> the things I do for solar. Okay. Well, while you're limping around, we pick the panels up and put them back on the shelf. Thank you very much. Very kind. So the panels have been well and truly punished, and now we're going to see what damage has been done. Some new fresh damage where it's getting a cell is starting to shunt. So I guess this is where you would have been standing on it. Check out the karate kick. Look at that. I'm proud. So one thing we've learned today, don't karate kick your solar panels. Yes, bad. Although I'd say that uh, if I'm being honest, standing on it was worse than karate kicking. If you have a choice, karate kicking or standing, karate kick. To answer the question I started with, just how easy is it to damage a solar panel, I've got to say, you don't have to jump on them, you don't have to karate kick them. If you don't look after them, yes, it is quite easy to damage a solar panel. So make sure you're using panels from a manufacturer that packages them properly, make sure you're using installers that know how to handle them. And the other thing we've learned is you can't see the damage always with a naked eye. So thanks Blair, or should I call you Arnie? This is Arnie and the Karate Kid signing off for Solar Quotes TV. For more information on panels, inverters or any other solar products, go to our website. And please jump on our social media channels if you ever have a question. Now I'm really excited. It's our world premiere of a brand new segment, Humans of Solar. This month we meet Paul, a running statistician who was a reluctant convert to solar, but once he got it and did the numbers, he was confident he was out in front. Hi, I'm Paul Sutcliffe from Seacliff Park and this is my solar system. I now currently would be classified probably as full-time professional coach statistician but I do it all on a voluntary basis. We have two Labradors um, named Clark and Elliot, named after Ron Clark and Herb Elliot. We installed a pool about three and a half years ago and we realised that the running cost was quite high with an electrical pump. We realised then we just needed to do something different and so we thought we could run the pool using solar. We figured that if we're running a pool we'd want the most, as many panels on our roof as we could possibly get. We've got a 10 kilowatt system, so our system has a uh, 33 panels, that, they're on both sides of our roof. We also have a slight issue with shading, that's why we don't have them on the north, north edge of the house. The inverter is a Fronius Primo 8.2-1 apparently. It's set up in the best spot we can have in our house to avoid any sunlight. We actually paid $8,500 for our whole system. It's converted our expensive electricity bill into a very what I call light electricity bill so we're only paying now somewhere around a thousand dollars a year but we were with the pool we're actually spending originally three and a half thousand dollars so we're basically getting back over two and a half thousand dollars in actual terms of payment which means we'll probably we will pay it back within three and a half years it's a great value for us
But I do like numbers and was worked in as a statistician in the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Yeah, I, I put together a graph. Um, you'll notice that these are our bills and the spikes are in the summer when we're running the pool. Uh, and those bills are quite large. So I think the highest one's $1,400 a quarter. So this side of the line is where after we installed the solar, the solid line is our actual final payment. The dotted line is the charge on usage that's being recorded. Uh, and the green bit is the bit that's getting saved because we're getting the money back from feed-in tariffs. So that's a pretty dramatic way of explaining how much we're saving. Um, I didn't realise it was going to be so much uh, until I analysed this the other day. For me, to, the best, easiest thing about solar is that it's easy to maintain. We've just basically got it installed and I really haven't touched it since. My, my main monitoring is I just, every time I'm out the front here, I just check the inverter to see whether it's working. Um, we've had no trouble whatsoever. It's pretty much a big thumbs up for solar. Um, look, I, I never thought I would be in this position and it probably did seem a lot of effort, but in fact, it panned out to be no effort at all. If you're looking for a quality solar install, jump onto our website, put in your postcode, hit the big red button and get up to three free, no obligation quotes from heavily vetted installers you can trust. And that was Paul, who got solar and ran with it. Now over to our ranger of reviews, who's gonna show us that it's not all sunshine and lollipops in the solar industry. Here's an example of what happens when you get a cut price system and you don't do your research. Sorry guys, I have to be a bit of a negative net this week. We received a review that I would really like to point out to you guys that this is what can happen in the solar industry, a bit too much in my opinion. It's not from a client of ours and I won't name them. They do advertise heavily on TV, so you might see them out there. Um, that's not to say that clients of ours don't mess up from time to time, but I read every review on the network and if that ever happens, uh, I ring them up and we sort it out pretty quickly. This review is from Lucy. Avoid at all costs. This company installed a system at my house so poorly that it did not meet standards, caused over $6,000 worth of damage to my house, used modified plugs that were a fire risk, and in the end, the whole system had to be removed and reinstated correctly. I have had over 100 plus telephone calls with this company. Um, yeah, I just want to point out with companies like this, one pattern that keeps reappearing is that the after sales service is always quite shoddy. Their staff are rude, arrogant, talk over the top of you, promise to call back and never do, laugh at me when I'm telling them about the damage and outright refuse to help. So you can see what the service is like. I ended up organizing all repairs myself due to their incompetence. I took days off work for installers to show up eight hours late or not at all. I have no idea how this company is still in business. Thanks, Ned. And that's what can go wrong when you don't do your research. 100 phone calls, what a misery. Check out as many review sites as you can before making a decision. Now, for the worst segment of the month because I've got to do some serious work. First question through email from David. I'm looking at buying a Tesla Model Y with a 75 kilowatt hour battery and would like to use this as the battery storage to supply my overnight power. Is there an inverter stroke charger available to do this? David, I've got some bad news for you, mate. Tesla have categorically stated that they will not allow their cars to output power to the grid or your home. So, sorry about that. If you do want to do that, you do have an option. You can buy a Nissan Leaf, and if you can find an inverter charger that's approved for connection to the grid, Nissan have categorically said that their cars will do that. The downside is you've got to drive a Nissan. Next question is also from David, and it's also via email. Is everyone into solar called David? Hi Finn, I'm in Queensland on the government's 44 cents, 59 cents with provider feed-in tariff. Nice. I'm wanting to move some circuits off grid. This is for fun and to play with batteries as I have an interest in this area and follow all the off grid YouTubers. You, my friend, are a proper solar nerd. Do you know if I can have some circuits off grid preferably with an ATS, automatic transfer switch, and keep my feed-in tariff. So David, what you want to do is you want to add more solar and batteries, but you want to keep that really lucrative feed-in tariff. And the good news is you can actually do that, but the batteries and solar that you add 
can never be connected to the grid. If they're not connected to the grid, no one can complain and no one can take away your feed-in tariff. Now that means no automatic transfer switch because that's a switch that goes from off-grid to on-grid. You can never connect that thing to the grid. So ditch the ATS, take your lights off-grid, take your fridge off-grid, take whatever you want off-grid as a separate system and keep that lovely feed-in tariff. Third question comes from Alphalas via the YouTube comments. What are some ongoing maintenance tips for a solar system you'd recommend? Number one, get good monitoring. Then if anything does start to go wrong, you'll be alerted straight away and you can get professionals in. Notwithstanding that, as long as you've got a well-installed solar system, in my opinion, you need to get it checked once every five years. Fourth question comes in through YouTube again, and this is from William Fairley. And I guess it's more of a statement than a question. Finn, it's all good being trendy, but can you please have a shave and cut your hair? Fairly rude, William. But just for you, I tried a lot of different looks out over the week. None of them really worked for me, apart from this one. But you know what? Looking back at the tape, William, you're right. I did look scruffy, and then I noticed that our set looked pretty scruffy too. So, thanks to your constructive criticism, I would like to dedicate our new set, which is fairly cool, to William Fairley. Thank you, William. Now, the new set wasn't cheap. So to pay for it, we'll be back after a word from our sponsors. Confused about who to trust when it comes to solar? Can I trust you? Who even are you? Oh, I object! So avoid the fear of making the wrong decision with solarquotes.com.au. We get you three free, no obligation quotes from trusted professionals in your area. Wow. Plus all the solar info you'd ever need. Hey, Solar Quotes, can you set me up? I'm Finn. I'm a chartered electrical engineer. I worked in solar at the CSIRO, and I've spent the last 12 years totally geeking out about everything solar. I've even written a best-selling book about it. It's gripping. And unlike other comparison sites, I've personally vetted over 500 solar suppliers. So we only connect you with the best in the biz. So before you commit to a solar provider, go to solarquotes.com.au. Wow, you've got great energy. Thanks, Solar Quotes. <clears throat> wow, there's my pride and dignity out the window. Now, over to a crew that have got pride and dignity in spades. Goliath was established by David, who's one of my best mates. Um, and he's an electrician and basically was installing for big solar sales companies back in 2012 and um, watched them all disappear. So obviously by them disappearing, uh, he lost a lot of money, wasn't paid for his installation work. So like most young ambitious blokes, he thought stuff the big solar companies, I'm gonna start up my own electrical business and, and specialize in solar and, and take on the big guys, hence the, the name David and Goliath. We think it's really important you know who's installing your solar system because at the end of the day that's the person that you're putting your faith in in your home and your solar savings. Anyone can buy any brand of product uh, but it all comes down to how it's installed and, and having the confidence in your installer. The biggest trend for us that we see is a lot of uh, a lot of our customers looking to upgrade their solar system because what they have isn't sufficient for the future. Uh, my doppelganger. Well I must admit right now I feel like Ricky Bobby because I don't know what to do with my hands through this interview. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. Trends moving forward. Um, obviously, you've got your electric vehicles coming up and, and batteries, but to actually charge your electric vehicle and charge your battery, you need a lot of PV. So the trend we see now is a lot of people are upgrading their systems to bigger systems to combat the, the greater electricity draw they'll be having with their battery and electric vehicle. Um, one of our most memorable installations was for the Zara Foundation. Uh, that's a non-for-profit organisation uh, assisting women and children uh, in domestic violence situations. So we're really happy to help out um, the Zara Foundation and Zara's Quest. So I do encourage you to look that up on Facebook and, and donate. To learn more about installers and see more than 50,000 reviews, jump on our website, solarquotes.com.au. Now, over to my second favourite segment. Solar Tech. The guys this month have been generous enough to give me 59 minutes 
to talk about my favorite, what? 59 seconds? Have given me 59 seconds to talk about all things solar tech. Time starts now. This month, I'm going to talk about budget manufacturers playing in the premium end of the solar industry. I think that's really interesting. Let's start with Leapton Solar. Leapton Solar are a Japanese company who make panels in China. Now, I've given them a bit of a hard time because some of the people selling their panels have been implying that they're Japanese panels. They're not, they're made in China, and there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, Leapton have just announced that their product warranty has increased from 15 years, which is generally where the budget panels lie, to 25 years, which is huge. That's where people like SunPower and LG, those really expensive, really good panels, that's their kind of product warranty. So they're kind of stepping on their turf, and that's really interesting how that's gonna go down. Talking about inverters now, GE, massive global behemoth, have chosen Australia to be the first place to launch their inverters that they're getting manufactured by a budget brand called Goodwee. How's that gonna play out? They're gonna be charging premium prices. I have so much more to say. To find out more about Goodwee, Badwee, go to your local urologist website. But if you wanna find out about leaks and solar panels, about Goodwee inverters, come to Solar Quotes. We've got all the information you could ever need. And now, the part of the show I know you've all been waiting for. The good news is Ronald has just arrived on his trusty steed, Tonto 23, all the way from his Adelaide Hills mansion. And now he's in the building. In fact, he's in his chair. Welcome, Ronald. Hello. What have you been writing about? Oh, I've been writing about uh, the Canberra Battery Test Reports results. Now, the Canberra Battery Test Centre, that's a government arena-funded battery testing... Yes. ...laboratory? Yes, it's a... P private organization that get our money to test batteries and tell us all about it. And what did you find out? Did they paint a rosy picture of battery reliability, home battery reliability? Oh, hell no. Nope, no, it's disastrous, really, when you look at it. I think they tested a total of 18 batteries. Guess how many worked without a problem? No, 15. No. Two. <laughs> Jesus. Guess how many are still available in Australia? Well, both of them. No, just one. Okay, there were big problems with battery reliability. Yes, and this is why, in my opinion, batteries are so expensive. If we compare them to the batteries they put in cars... Through the roof. You've got the cost of home batteries going up, and you've got the cost of car batteries going down. So, since 2017, the cost of a car battery for an electric car has fallen by around one-third. But, as you can see, well, home batteries keep going up. So, let me get this right. Five years ago, the experts were mm. telling us that home batteries would plummet in price over the next five years. Oh, yeah. And they haven't. Yes, yeah, some so, predictions said we'd have one in ten homes would have one by now, some even more. And your theory is that the reason there's this price disparity between home batteries and car batteries home batteries have actually got more expensive while car batteries have got cheaper is that the manufacturers are factoring in the costs of dealing with all the problems they're expecting yes of course normal business practice they have to do it they're covering their asses so why are they expecting all these problems with home batteries and not car batteries uh they had lots of problems with car batteries they sold them apparently they haven't solved them yet with the uh, home battery storage so the thing is with a home battery it's going to do a lot more work while it's still in warranty than a car battery, an electric car battery. Right. You take the Tesla 3, Model 3, the Type I drove, it can provide 160,000 kilometers of driving under warranty. A uh, home battery, the Powerwall 2, it's gonna provide about seven times more energy while still in warranty. To wrap it up, a comprehensive testing regime over years has found problems with most of the home batteries it's tested. Home batteries have to deliver about seven times more energy than car batteries, so they're way more expensive, and the manufacturers are having issues with them. And as far as Ronald's concerned, his theory as to why home batteries are so expensive, which has confounded many men and women, but not our Ronald, is that the manufacturers must be pricing in having problems in the future while the batteries are under warranty. And that's why at Solar Quotes, 
If you want a battery, we say go with the really big brands who will have a brand to defend, who will honor their warranty. But if you just want to save money, you don't need to buy a battery. You can get tiny, zero, even negative bills in most parts of Australia just with a decent sized solar system. Now, Ronald. Yes. I believe that you've actually written a love poem. That is true. I've written a poem about how much I love reliable batteries. The title of this poem is Hooking Dorothea McKellar to a Generator to Make Electricity by Getting Her to Spin in Her Grave. Trips off the tongue. Mm -hmm. The love of dispatchable power, of energy on demand, from gas and coal generation, has caused the world much harm. The cost of this convenience, brown streams and soft dim skies, I know but cannot bear it. My love is otherwise. I love a reliable battery. I make these sweeping claims for varied discharge ranges off grid or on the mains. I love their endless cycles. I love their durability. There's beauty with no error, the long lasting battery for me. Uncontrolled thermal runaway, all tragically too soon making cells fire-spouting fountains, the hot gold flames of doom. Dangerous tangled dendrites allowed to slowly grow, pierced battery cell membranes and sparked the burning glow. Core out my heart, my warranty, a replacement it does deny. When sick at heart are before us, we see the battery die. But consumer guarantees guard and we can bless again the arrival of a remedy for a fair and reasonable claim. A durable battery, deterioration it can withstand. All you who do not love them, you will not understand. Though technology holds many splendors, wherever I may die, I know to a reliable battery my homing thoughts will fly. Beautiful, Ronald. Thank you. Have you sung it to any batteries yet? No, not yet. I haven't found one worthy. That brings us to the end of episode three of Solar Quotes TV. And being our April show, it's also the 64th anniversary of the patenting of the first silicon-based solar cell that was 6% efficient by Bell Labs in the US. Now, the 64 years has inspired me to follow Ronald's lead and do a little performance for you. Will you still need me, MPPT me, when I'm 64? MPPT, multi-powerpoint tracker. I thought it was funny. You suck.